good afternoon. This is the video newsletter for Buy, Sell, Short for Saturday, March 12th. Uh, we finally got what looks to be a possible near-term bottom in the market. A couple of reasons for that. Of course, you know, the tragedy in Japan and uh, the lack of, you know, the day of rage that everyone had been talking about in Saudi Arabia ended up being the day of snooze. And really those two events together sent oil prices down. We had some early weakness in the market, but uh, buyers continued to move in. We're deeply oversold over the last couple of days. The bears have grown some big balls. A lot of traders are pretty high cash. You've got a lot of traders who put on new shorts on a lot of breakdowns and their expectations for breakdowns in the indices. So, you know, the most think that the market is going to go down next week. And usually, as you know, the market typically does opposite of what the most thinks and screws them. And we have the makings of that right now in the market. Remember as well, next week is options expiration week. And we are down sharply over the last few days. And, you know, typically what happens is whatever the move is, especially if it's a big move in the week prior to options expiration, more times than not, the market moves opposite of that trend into options expiration week. And the reason for that is simple. The option writers, you know, the brokers who write options, they want to make as much money as possible they don't care if it's puts. They don't care. Actually, what they care is they want the most number of puts and then most number of calls to be worth zero. When they're worth zero, the guys who wrote them bank on the money. So typically what you see is a counter trend rally on options expiration. It's been a while since we had this kind of sell-off going into options expiration week. So, you know, I'm thinking we're going to see a nice little pop on the market next week. What we're looking at right now is the SMH that continues to be our focus. That has led the market down and we have a possible very nice near-term bottom on the SMH. We held that uh, December low 33.22 33.11. We ended up closing above 34, so our target goal for Monday would be a bounce back above the 50-day moving average at 34.65. What I'm thinking we're going to see this week is the SMH, as you can see, is an indice that when it gets really too far from its 20-day exponential, both up and down, typically gets a nice bounce back to that area. And the 20-day exponential right now is at 35.21. One other thing to note on the SMH Check out uh, Stochastics. This is the most oversold we've been on Stochastics since. Let's take a look at the one-year chart. Really, uh, this is the most oversold we've been since August and September of last year. And when we had that initial big sell-off down under the 20 level on Stochastics back then, we had almost a $2 pop over the next uh, two to three sessions on the SMH. So... You know, what I'm hoping for, what I'm looking for is, is you know, maybe a dollar to a dollar seventy-five bounce on the SMH uh, during next week. And that'll make our few SMH calls that we picked up on Thursday very, very nice. Looking at the Dow 15-minute chart, again, as you recall, we had two failed golden crosses on the Dow 15-minute chart. Really rare to see that happen. Um... But like I said, no technical indicator is 100% perfect. And, you know, this will just prove that point. On the Dow 15 minute chart, we got a nice little snapback, especially going into the last hour. And we're right back up to the breakdown we saw of that rising wedge that was in place over the last uh, week, week and a half. So let's see what happens on Monday. We're a little bit overbought after that bounce on Monday. But, you know, we really could see the bulls come in after a possible early dip on Monday. And I'm still thinking we're going to have a nice little bounce next week on the market. Looking at the Dow daily chart, you can see we had to redraw our uptrend line now. We were able to close above the 50-day moving average on the Dow, which is very positive in my opinion. What we need to see is continuation on this on Monday. We really do not want to see a close under 12k or a red day on Monday because that will really throw these charts uh, up in the air and anything really could happen then but what we possibly are looking at is you know resistance now on the Dow daily is up there around 12 225 and you can also see that reflected on the 15 minute chart as well 
Uh, if we just draw the line from the recent highs made over the last two weeks, you can see that 12 225 level. So that will be the key area to watch on a possible new uptrend. Otherwise, we'll continue to bounce around in this area. Quick mention on oil. Since that early spike, the early or this week, you know, we had a couple of events conspiring to bring oil prices down. The expectation is Japan, Japan imports everything. They have no natural resources. So with a lot of the country offline due to the disaster, you know, the expectation is there'll be a reduced uh, demand for oil at least over the next month or so. Plus, you know, Saudi Arabia, day of rage, ended up being a day of snooze. Oil prices up $20 essentially over the last two weeks since the Libya crisis began. And it's looking more and more like Gaddafi is going to stamp out this uh, rebellion in his country. Sad to say, but uh, you're going to start to see the market probably ignore oil, at least in the near term. But anyway, let's jump into some stock plays. Tough week. Uh, a, a tough week if you were long. Simple as that. But as I continue to hammer home, every time we have a decent-sized market sell-off, look at market sell-offs as a good thing. It's bringing a lot of stocks back down to where we can buy them at the bottom for easy bounce gains whenever the market bounces up. You know, you have traders thinking, that just like bulls think the market is going to continue going, 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 going. Whenever you have sell-off, you have the same, you know, the opposite set of people going, the market's going to continue to go down, down, down. You know, they just ignore common sense. They ignore cyclical trends, etc., etc. NEI, pretty frustrating for us this week, but a good thing. Friday, we finally saw what looks to be capitulation in NEI. It was very, very strong on Thursday and actually trapped a lot of people. It was strong on a bad market, and then they gapped it down Friday morning and just went after the stops. A lot of traders just said, screw this, threw in the towel, stock bottom at $1.75, slowly started to build, and then we saw when we saw the overall indices start to go green, which is when we jumped in and loaded up on this stock. We got our golden cross on Friday. That's when the 50-day moving average crosses up through the 200-day moving average. Very bullish. Again, ordinarily on most stocks, if they triggered my stops, I would have just run for the hills. But, you know, we've played NEI so many times over the last year on its current setup. And that's when stochastics are under 20. That this is a stock... Even if I stopped out some of my position, I would not stop out of all of it. And like I mentioned in the chat room, what I would be doing is looking for that signal to load the boat, to really load the boat, just based on the fact that every time we've seen stochastics under 20, this stock has gone on a very meaningful upside move really, really soon thereafter. So we're looking like this is going to be the week for NEI. $2 would be the confirmation of a new run. But on the charts, you can see a buck ninety-five is that breakout spot. So you know, probably the next spot I would look to add NEI would be on a break through two dollars, and then two thirteen to two thirty are our two target range ranges on NEI. Check out COOL. Didn't matter what the market did this week, this stock just on a monster move. And you know, since my trading alert when I was on my Vegas vacation there. Uh, in February is now a 100% gainer for those still playing the stock. Very, very strong action on this one. And, you know, our sympathy play, of course, is ZOOG. Should be trading at $10 a share based on its sales, profits, market cap, etc., etc. It really only needs volume. What will probably bring that in is its next earnings report, which is due anytime. And when they come out with that earnings report and post EPS and a nice income probably start to see the volume come into this one and we will finally get our run on it. WZE, you know, victim of the market this week, all the right sectors, penny stock play on social media, uh, just love all the sectors it's in. It really just needs a close above 30 cents and we'll be off to the races on this one. BNX, beaten down by the market over the last couple of days. Again, this is the happy time. This upcoming week, last year is when this stock went boom. Also, 
March 15th is the deadline for ta- uh, for businesses to file their tax extensions. Remember, BNX is in that market now. They picked up FileLater.com. Last year, 6 million businesses filed for a tax extension. And at $40 a pop, do the math, could be a very lucrative uh, upcoming week for BNX. Again, breakout on this one is $0.40. Cents. So we continue to monitor this one. It's been holding throughout the last three months has been holding that 28 29 cent level like a rock star so we just need really big volume and a decent market to finally break this one out to the upside fcel has done what it did after its last earnings report uh market loved its earnings report again it's been on a nice little breakout we jumped into this one at two dollars on friday looking for a move to 210 220 plus Look at the volume here over the last couple of days. And what we're looking for a replay of is what happened after its last earnings report there in December when the stock essentially went from 140 to 240 over the next week. And we've had the beginnings of that right now. On the entry we did on Friday, where I would look to play stops would be the low for Friday is where I would play stops on that. And again, targets 210, 220, very high volume, RSI, stochastics everything looks good green market early next week should be good for this one to continue its run up there to the 240 like its other peers have done like acpw and uh emkr ipas we had a monster bidder appear on this one late in the day the stock has actually been really uh stable since its early week sell-off on the market so we jumped into this one, 151, 150 area. Great pickup on this stock, in my opinion. Breakout is a dollar seventy-one. So let's see if we can finally get that breakout on IPAS this week. And this, you know, this is a gem of a stock if you've got a medium-term time frame, in my opinion. And you know, could be one of the next stocks to be a rule of two stock. Hopefully next week. Keep an eye on Sirius. We have not traded this stock in quite a while, but this one is setting up really, really nicely, possibly for this upcoming week. You've got a couple of possible buy areas on this one. The downtrend line or resistance right now is, you know, 181. Probably the safer entry would be 183 to 185 and then add to it on a break of 188. This is very likely going to be the next rule of two stock that busts through the $2 level. Very nice setup on this one. It's holding its 50-day moving average like a rock star. RSI, stochastics, everything looks good on this one. And really, this is a stock that uh, when it gets a break, and I repeat, when it gets a break of $2 could really be a big, big mover. So definitely one to keep high on your watch list and place some price trigger alerts on it uh, for possible trades this upcoming week. Quick mention on CIGX. This is a play we jumped into in the chat room on the break of 211 on Wednesday, and the stock hit 290 on Friday. Nothing like what, a 40% gain in two days. Since we first alerted on this stock last month, the stock is almost a 100% gain, or it's up 90% now. For you guys who are still riding this one, a absolute monster winner. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Uh, Fifty to what is it? The forty to fifty at fifty percent plus winner we've had in the last two months. Just you know, what a fantastic market is all I got to say. You know, and the weakness we've seen in the market over the last few days. Welcome it. Have a positive attitude. Sell offs breed opportunities. Beat that into your head. And as for that, I'm thinking we're going to have a very, very nice upcoming week. We've got a lot of tech stocks that got beat over the head over the last week and just asking for some volume for a nice little snapback move. So that's what we're going to be looking for this week. And, you know, that's it for the video. If you've got any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the chat room on Monday. Goodbye.